All right. So, apologetics. This is the third section of the first chapter, okay? So, we're going over philosophical proof, proof now. We went through scientific proof. We went through historical proof. Now, it's time for philosophy. Okay. Basically, this whole thing revolves around the absurdity of life without God, okay? So just how pointless and meaningless life is when you don't have God in the equation. All right. So an important note we need to make is we fight atheism out of love, okay? We don't say that people who are atheists have absolutely, absolutely no meaning and no purpose, okay? We believe in their value as a human being and as a child of God, okay? So, the cosmic orphan. Basically, we are the only creatures in creation that ask why and that separates us from animals because instinct leads every other creature in his creation, okay? We're the only ones that question our existence. And as man became smarter, we all killed God. We thought, oh wait, we don't, we don't, need, we don't need this guy. He's invisible. Why do, we don't need him. So, a lot of people believe that your life is an accidental byproduct of nature made by time, matter, and chance. You have no reason for existing, and your only promise is death. Yeah, positive message. Uh, so in killing God, man orphaned himself, okay? We separated ourselves. We now sort of think we have no father in heaven. To us, we know we do, yeah. Is that... James? Am I good to move on? Or? Okay, okay. You, you, can, you can say yes. Okay, so without God, there is no purpose. Without God, there is no afterlife to believe in, okay? The end is just the grave. All our lives are just a moment. But to us, it is absolutely everything. Which makes sense, you know? Okay. We know we exist, but to sort of contrast that, we also know that one day we will not exist. And that's not a comforting thought to many, but... Uh, you know, we have the afterlife. So, Jean-Paul Sartre, does anyone know French? Or any language that would, can you say the name? Because I have no clue what I'm saying. Okay, thank you. So, he said that, oh, important note, you should know who said all these things. Because they do quiz you like, They'll give you a quote, and then they say, who said this? So, whether John Paul Sartre said, whether our time on earth is several hours long or several years, make no difference if you lose eternity. Okay. All right. So, the ultimate absurdity of life without God. Without God, it means that the man and universe are all marching towards death. No meaning, no purpose, no value. It's just, you're, you're going, and you're going, and guess what? It's going to end. Nothing's going to mean anything. <laughs> okay. So, the life that we have becomes... Oh, I said that already. So, when you think of that worldview, the life that we have becomes absurd. It has absolutely no meaning no value, and your life has no significance. Okay. So, we're going to go deeper into no meaning. Okay. No meaning makes existence absurd. It doesn't matter if you lived. There's uh, two types of significance. There's relative and ultimate significance. So, relative is the effect, on, is the effect you have on others that provides that relative significance. Because if like, I don't know, if I compliment, uh, uh, wait, your name's Elijah, right? Yeah, I knew, I knew that. 
if I compliment Elijah relative to Elijah, that had great significance. But if you look at the ultimate significance of me complimenting Elijah, there's nothing that comes out of it. There's just, like, why, why should I even compliment him? It had no meaning. It, it doesn't, Elijah, it doesn't mean anything. There's nothing there. So, next we talk about immortality. Now, the duration of your existence does not make it meaningful. And no God means even immortality has no meaning. So there, there's just, there's nothing. A, lo a lot of this talk will be me saying and stressing the point that there's nothing without God. So, yeah. Come on. Okay. No value. We also have no value if there is no God. So if you're a saint or if you're satanic, that makes absolutely zero difference because everything ends in the grave. Nothing means anything. So Dostoevsky Dostoevsky said, if there is no immortality, then all things are permitted. You can do anything because you're going to die. Right? I mean, it makes sense. So, this theory pra just praises selfishness. There's, there's no reason you should do anything for, everyone, for anyone. Sacrificing yourself for someone else is stupid because it's, it's basically suicide at that point. You have nothing, there's no benefit from saving that person. Marriage would have no meaning except for personal, personal pleasure. And parenting is stupid. Because what, honestly, let's think of kids and how annoying they can all be, why would you raise them? If there's no meaning behind anything, there would be no reason to raise them. They're just annoying inconveniences, and they take up, uh, what's it called? Real estate, money, and time. Boom. So, there's also no, no morality. There's no objective right or wrong. There's nothing to solidify, hey, Murder is right and murder is wrong. Uh, morals would be more of our personal preference, okay? So, like, I might find it okay to murder, murder Elijah. But, like, Sarah might be like, hey, that's not cool. You can't kill people with a name that starts with the letter E. There's nothing to base that on. So... Saying if, if you were to speak out against something being wrong and you have no God in your life, then it's like, what, what are you, there's nothing you're basing that on. It's just, like, it has no, it has no background. It's an empty statement. And by this logic, Hitler could be just as good as Mother Teresa. Again, morals out the window. Hitler equals Mother Teresa. All right, so there's also the moral obligation of things. If you see a Tata, like, I don't know, drop her groceries or something, you feel morally obligated to go help her pick it up. But in this society, where there is no morals, what, why? You're not obligated to do anything. Nothing's going to look down on you. No one's going to bat an eye at you just letting Tata drop her oranges and, like, walk into the street. Am I going too fast? Okay. So, the lack of value without God. I forgot the moral obligation stuff on the other side. Okay. We're going to edit that. So, the culture would become the moral comp compass. Judgments would all be relative, and there's no absolute right or wrong when there's no value. If you think of evil, crime, war, general evil, it's not absolutely wrong, because nothing is absolutely wrong. Because there's no right or wrong. You just do what you gotta do. You do what you wanna do. I'm gonna kill this fly. Okay. So, under that under that umbrella, 
What is wrong in one part of the U.S. could be completely right a city over. So it's just there. There's if you look at all of this, like without God, there's just no like there's no moral compass. It everyone's allowed to indulge in whatever they feel, and like we know when people do that it hurts a lot of people, but like you know. Who, who needs to care about that when you have no morals? Okay. So, when you have no God, there is no purpose. Okay? Everything will lack a purpose. Everything anyone has ever done has had no purpose and will never have a purpose. The universe is completely pointless. It, like, it, it just... It came into conception one day, and then one day, it's all just going to die. Like, okay. Concerning man, you would have no purpose, okay? There's no hope. That is an actual quote that Abuna wrote in the PDF file of these slides. Uh, T.S. Eliot said, this is the way the world ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper. So, like, not everything's going to explode. It's just going to... All right. Purpose. If you, have, if, if you do not have that, it also shows that everything was an accident and there was absolutely no reason to exist. So, people also think we are just the byproducts of genetic roulette. So Sigmund Freud, B.F. Skinner, Francis Crick all argue that our choices are based on biological systems. Okay. If you're confused, don't worry. I was too. Okay. So the problem of atheism. Man cannot live consistently and happily in this worldview. If you live consistently, there's no happiness. If you live happily, there's no consistency. And both of those are core things to living a happy life. So this, this guy, Francis Schaeffer, has this idea of what he calls the two-story universe. Okay, So basically, the lower room is atheism in a way. And then the upper room is where there is morals, values, purpose. You have a meaning up there. And he says that modern man resides in a two-story universe. In the lower story is the finite world without God. Here, life is absurd. In the upper story are meaning, value, and purpose. Now, modern man lives in the lower story because he believes that there is no God. But he cannot live happily in such an absurd world. Therefore, he continually makes leaps of faith into the upper story to affirm meaning, value, and purpose, even though he has no right to, since he does not believe in God. Modern man is totally inconsistent when he makes his sleep because these values cannot exist without God and man in his lower story does not have God. Does that make sense? At all? James? Elijah? Okay. All right. Jean-Paul Sartre, again, he says that one creates a meaning for life when they choose a certain course of action. So, it, you know, like for us that would be choosing the church over choosing not to be in a church. All right. You also can't say, or he says that you can't say there's no meaning and then try to establish a meaning, which is what a lot of atheists do. It's like, oh yeah, there's no meaning. But I'm able to find meaning. No, you can't. There, you, you can't. You can't find a, a carrot in a pile of blueberries. I don't know what that analogy was, but I'm going to go with it. All right. He also says that creating a meaning is self-delusion. Yeah. So if you're going from the second floor... If you're going from the first floor to the second, I'll fix that, you're picking up a value that makes life with the tenant downstairs more livable. 
Okay. So what Christianity does is it gives us these assets that we can sort of proclaim to people who don't believe, like all of apologetics. This is all this is all a proof of God. So like this is all stuff we can pass down. Okay. So what does Christianity give us? It gives us everything that atheism can. It gives you God and immortality. So, both these things are necessary to live consistently and happily. We have our morals set out in stone, quite very literally, you know, because that one guy, he got some stones and they had rules on them. Okay. The Bible also offers a consistent, joyful, meaningful, purposeful, and valuable life. If you follow what it says, you can find all these things in there. This does not prove that Christianity is the right religion or anything, but it gives a situation in which atheism fails, in which it, it has no base, I guess. Yeah, this life, our life, our Christian life, has everything that an atheist life does not. Uh, Abuna posted a final thought thing. He said, when presented with atheism and Christianity, the rational decision is life with purpose and eternity. The alternate is death, despair, and no purpose. One is happy, one is sad. It's a pretty easy decision, but I don't know why people don't do that. Okay. All right, it's the lobsh. For those who do not know, a lobsh is, uh, it means explanation. And during Tezbeha, we have lobsh for all four canticles. So we'll say the canticle, then we'll sing the explanation for what we just say. So we fight atheism out of love. We believe all lives have a value. And we love these people and we want them to realize their value. Life is completely absurd without God. You have no meaning. You have no purpose. You have no value without God. Men also cannot live consistently or happily in this worldview. And Christianity offers everything atheism doesn't. Meaning, purpose, value. Okay. That's everything I have. Because I prepared, I finished doing this I think an hour ago. So don't clap. Yes. Okay. Here's an important note. So Buna told me if anyone comes in here and disrupts, I need to I need to, I need to warn you. I need to warn you. Anthony, I'm gonna warn you that this could affect you becoming a reader. Okay? So if you can't behave in here and ask like relevant questions, we can't like we can't like let you be a reader if you're just gonna disrupt. Someone, someone stop the recording. Yeah, I'm not.